board certified specialist internist. Thank you so much for joining me in the second video in the series entitled Physician Examination. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I strongly encourage you to do so. Today we're talking about how to approach the clinical examination of a patient who has a malignancy, which is most likely a metastatic lesion from an unknown primary. All right, so let me just get my pen in there. As usual, we start off by introducing ourselves to the patient, positioning the patient, ideally semi fowlers and obtain adequate exposure. Then just step back and look at the patient at the gestalt of the case. Is the patient especially distressed? Do they have a normal mental state? If the sputum pot is available, just examine it for blood-stained sputum, which may probably speak to something malignant going on in the lungs. Right? Does the patient have a fever? So take the temperature. Then we attack the hands, okay? Note for palmar pallor, koinonychia, which is spoon-shaped nails, nicotine staining, clubbing. Right, there's four different grades of clubbing of the fingers and or toes. Is a wrist or tibial tenderness, which speaks for hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. Wasting of the intrinsic muscles of the hand, which speaks to infiltration of the brachial plexus, notably C8, T1, and T2 nerve roots, by what could be a superior sulcus tumor. Examine the skin, usually of the forearms, which are nice and exposed, for scratch marks. Looking for acanthosis, negative cans, especially at the nape of the neck or in the axillary skin folds. Uh, pigmentation, thrombophlebitis, excision scars. Look also for any uh, melanotic lesions or even amelanotic suspicious lesions on the skin. Moving up to the cervical lymph nodes, examine those cervical lymph nodes. Now we have lots of lymph node groups, the submental, the submaxillary, the supraclavicular, we have the anterior and posterior. Uh, triangles, we have the pre and post auricular, the occipital. Don't forget the axillary lymph nodes, the inguinal lymph nodes, right? And if you indeed find lymph nodes, you're going to describe the characteristics. Right? Is it firm or rubbery? What's the distribution, the site, the overlying skin, right? the tenderness, the consistency? Then look into the mouth for leukoplakia, world is ring, speaking to enlarged tonsils. Strido and hoarseness. Now, if there's hoarseness, of course, you probably want to engage the ENT guys to come and have a look at those vocal cords. Examine the scalp and then the eyes for scleral icterus and for what may be a retinal melanoma. Right, thyroid nodules, especially in the setting of a goiter. Indirect laryngoscopy, we said, especially if there's cervical adenopathy or hoarseness. Then don't forget in the precordial exam and the chest exam to examine for the breast lump, nipple inversion, expressible discharge, gynecomastia, which speaks to a probable malignancy in the breast or to or from the breast. Then examine the abdomen, noting hepatosplenomegaly and ascites. Swivel examination, right, for testicular mass, cryptoorganism, and left side of varico seal. Vaginal examination with a speculum. Then you want to do a rectal examination, especially if you have an elderly gentleman with uh, features of urinary tract obstruction, with hesitancy, with poor stream, with terminal dribbling. You want to assess the prostate, right? Check for stool or cold blood with or without a sigmoidoscopy, and lastly, urinalysis. So quite a comprehensive um, examination approach here, guys. Okay, here we have a gorgeous superior sulcus mass that we can appreciate. All right, uh, so this is what we call a pancos tumor, a superior sulcus tumor, which arises from the apex of the lung. Clinical manifestations would be pain in the shoulder or inner aspect of the arm along the ulnar distribution. We said this is probably due to infiltration of the brachial plexus, C8, T1, T2 nerve roots. You may also have a wasting of the small intrinsic muscles of the hand due to C8 and T1 nerve involvement. Local invasion of the tumor can cause pain and tenderness of the first and second ribs where you may see rib erosions and destruction evident on a chest firm. Horner's syndrome, which is involvement of the sympathetic pathway as it passes through the T1 nerve root, will give you typical ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis of that affected side. Treatment options, guys, is analgesia for neuropathic pain. Consider nerve block if severe, and of course, surgical removal of the tumor with a view to radiotherapy, okay? What's happening here? This is the infamous Pemberton sign, right? Also speaks to thoracic outlet obstruction, right? Where you ask the patient to lift both arms over the head for at least over a minute. What you're going to see is increased plethora and cyanosis a raised jugular venous pressure, which is non parathetal and inspiratory stridor probably speaks to some kind of mass or some kind of pathology causing thoracic artery obstruction and superior vena cava syndrome. Here we have a clubbing, this is grade 4 clubbing, 
Right, so obvious drum sticking and pad peaking. This is advanced stage clubbing. Okay, in the book of John, chapter 15, verses 5 through 8, Jesus Christ tells us, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. But if a man does not abide in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Now such a branch is picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. But if a man remains in me, you can ask whatever you wish, I will give it to you. This is to my Father's glory that you abide in me and bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. How do you know someone is a disciple of Jesus? By the fruit that they bear. And Galatians 5.22 gives us the list of fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. I pray we will abide in Christ, remain attached to him, get our nourishment from him like a branch derives its nourishment from the vine, and so we will bear good fruit, showing ourselves to be his disciple. Amen. Have a lovely day. I'll see you soon with another physician examination approach. Take care.